I just want to thank everyone for being here um, and I'm going to give a brief introduction. Um, so if you don't already know me, I'm Kendra from Wild China um, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to our esteemed guest today. We have professional pipa performer and composer Gao Hong. Um, so before I hand things over to her, I'd like to give a brief introduction uh, to Gao Hong's life and career so you can learn a little bit about her. Um, she'll also be talking um, about her history and about the pipa in a moment here, so you'll get a much more in-depth uh, professional explanation from her. Um, but before she starts, I just want to let you know, um, Gao Hong has performed all around the world uh, and her compositions have gained international recognition, being played by world-class musicians globally. Um, and in addition to performing and composing, Gao Hong also teaches both in her home state of Minnesota, as well as as a guest professor at multiple institutions in China. Um, and if her achievements weren't already enough, uh, she's gone even further to blaze a new path for the pipa with her cross genre and cross cultural collaborations. And in 2016, she completed the first pipa method book ever written in English, opening a new door for pipa education in the English speaking world. Uh, she currently teaches Chinese music instruments and directs a Chinese music ensemble at Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota, and she continues to perform herself, though she is doing so virtually at the moment. Um, so I would now like to introduce Gao Hong, um, and if you guys have any questions during uh, the, the talk um, or the video that we will show later, uh, please type them in the Q&A or in the chat box, and we will open up uh, for a Q&A session uh, toward the end of this. So yeah, please um, send in your questions and comments and if you sent any in um, in advance um, on the registration sheet I have those here and I will be reading those aloud so thank you everyone for joining us and Gao Hong I will hand it over to you thank you so much for having me and thank uh, thanks to all the people who tune in today it is a, such a difficult time for everybody so we're living in the zoom <laughs> But at least I know it doesn't matter where we live and the music always connect us. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. I hope you all stay safe and uh, have a wonderful, um, you know, the, during the difficult times, not too difficult. So I hope today I will share with you some about my career, about my playing and about the people, maybe play a little about my own piece. Um, so, uh, uh, um, as you know, uh, my name is Gao Hong. Gao is my last name. Hong is my first name. Uh, and uh, Gao Hong in Chinese meaning high rainbow, and like a big rainbow in the sky. I love that name. And But I couldn't switch to Hong Gao because I could be a different person. <laughs> so you always see me as a Gao Hong, but you can call me Gao, you can call me Hong or you can call me high rainbow, doesn't matter. <laughs> For me, it's not a, a, a important whatever you call me, it's fine. And I started uh, play the people when I was eight and um, my mom was a music teacher. So she uh, trying to force me to play all the instrument and because uh, I was a um, girl up during the cultural revolution. So my father was an uh, uh, artist and also was a landowner. So if anybody know a little bit about Cultural Revolution, you know we were in trouble at that time. So uh, my mom was a little worried about how my future would be. So she decided to force me to be, be a musician. So in that way, I may be able to escape from the, from the Cultural Revolution, go to the countryside. So many of you probably don't know, my first instrument was in the pipa. At age eight, my mom forced me to play accordia. You know, the accordia is uh, uh, from Russia, the, uh, Russia, the time because Russia is a uh, Chinese big brother. Uh, so that's why we learned everything from them. But only a few, few months, my mom realized I'm not very good at that because I was too skinny, too, too thin. I couldn't play well. So I'm like, oh, forget about it. So my mom, um, uh, my first Chinese instrument I play, it's called yue qin. Look like a mong, short neck, a mong guitar, but it's a short neck. It's a, at that time, only two strings. Right now, if you're a musician, probably all know, Yue Qing is four strings, but at that time it's only, only two strings. And, and it's for a company for 
opera, baking opera. But uh, it was probably because it was only two string. I was very quickly learn fast. I only feel weeks I was on the radio for Luoyang where I was born and my mom said oh maybe it's too easy let's add a, a other string so I learned uh, Liu Qing which means three strings <laughs> it's like a mini pipa but now it's a four string at that time it's only three string then again quickly and my mom realized that oh maybe you should do uh, something more difficult so let's play the zither which means gu zheng I was born in China, Luoyang. So Luoyang Zheng is one of the most famous, one of the four most famous style of school of the Gu Zheng. Everybody learned. That time I only, I think that time is only 16 strings. Then later 18 string, now it's 21 string. Some Sometimes people have 24 string. So that was great, it's so beautiful. And I played the Gu Zheng. I study with a um, local um, artist, but I realized my mom said, if you want to get into a job, Guzheng is too many people to learn, then you will have a less opportunity to get in. Okay, let's play Arhu. Oh, okay, play the Arhu, but also Arhu is very popular. Not many people can get into a professional. Okay, play, how about play uh, Jiao Ta Qing, which means kind of like a organ, piano, uh, doesn't work. How about to play violin? So I play the violin. And then after all this, my mom said, you know what, let's play the pipa because the pipa is the most difficult one. So you have a less competition. I still remember when I first went to my, my mom wasn't, a, uh, my mom was a musical teacher. She couldn't play any instrument. She was an opera singer. So she just literally looked at the book Okay, you play this, or you play that. And then finally, my mom took me to a local um, opera uh, pipa accompanist and to that. He said, you know, pipa is the most difficult one. 100 pipa player, only one become a professional. Do you want to be the one? <laughs> I said, I don't know. So uh, he had, uh, he passed away. He had uh, three boys all play the pipa. Guess what? None of them now are professional. <laughs> so, but, but anyway, so I played the pipa about four years and I got an uh, audition to uh, uh, accepted by the professional dance and singing troupe at age 12. So at age 12, I became a professional musician, move away from, from uh, Henan province to Hebei province is a dance singing troupe. So at age 12, everybody is, I mean, was going to school. I was have to travel with the other people. So it was a very difficult time, really, really difficult time because every time I saw the people, little kids with their parents, I would cry. Every time I saw pass by a school, I would cry. So it wasn't my, really wasn't my choice. It's my like my mom forced me you know, in China, many, many people are, uh, the parents decide your your job or whatever they wish for. So I was a very, very um, difficult at the time. But uh, after four years and um, about to go into quit because it's just not <laughs> my passion. So young to travel. Then suddenly the Hebei Art School was audition for us student. I said, oh, great. I finally can go back to school. So I was very, very lucky and got accepted to the Hebei Arts School in the music department. So I had a six year training, pre-college training. Then after that, I graduated, um, became a PIPA teacher there and became a, a teaching a PIPA at the Hebei Arts School. Now it's a, uh, it's a, a college. So then during that time, I, I uh, uh, had an amazing honor to met my uh, teacher, Lin Shicheng. If you don't know about the pipa, Lin Shicheng is like a rubble shanka on the pipa. So it's the most famous uh, pipa master and the teacher in the world, actually, uh, like a Liu Dehai, or whatever you think about it right now, the most famous pipa player, oh, it's under his. 
uh, study at that time. So I was very, very lucky, uh, became his student. And also he was the sixth generation of Pudong style, which means Pudong school of people. Um, very, very um, uh, distinguished on the left hand of the bottle. It's really, really emotional storytelling of music. So it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, I got uh, accepted to a central conservatory of music in Beijing. And everybody know it's very, very difficult to get it, get it in. I never even dreamed one day I would be uh, into a central conservatory because I knew I have no chance to get it. So when uh, my teacher is so amazing and uh, he, he actually, uh, registered me, paid the fee, and then wrote me a letter say, okay, Gao Hong, I just registered you to come audition. Please come to Beijing to do the first audition. I was say, what? What? I'm going to Central Conservatory to audition. So I just grabbed my people, went there, had my first audition. Then I got a second row. I got a third row. Suddenly I got a, I got a in. <laughs> So it's like a um, it's like a fairy tale. I really, literally, I tell people I always secretly write down Shanghai Conservatory, China Conservatory, Tianjin Conservatory, Xi'an Conservatory. I never even dare to write down Central Conservatory. They said, "Why is that?" Because actually, um, right now we have more. And that year in nineteen eighty six, the whole China only have two people player accepted. One was from, uh, um, she was already in Central Conservatory from uh, first grade and uh, Fu Xiao, then Fu Zhong is, uh, I, I think if anybody who is here, you know the people player Zhang Hongyan, we're the classmate. So she is the one, I'm the one, only one from outside of the Central Conservatory. Now you understand why it is so amazing for me to get it in. I don't know how I did it, but anyway, I'm so honored. So after four years, I studied with my uh, teacher Lin Shi Cheng, and uh, and then I, I became a soloist in the uh, Beijing dance singing troupe. So um, uh, behalf of uh, Beijing government, uh, uh, then I we went to. Uh, Tokyo for performance for 20 years anniversary of a relationship with China and uh, uh, Japan. So I did a solo, then suddenly there is um there was a performance agent in 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 Japan asked me if I would want to come to Japan to have a tour. I said, sure. <laughs> so that's, I said, okay. So I um in after one two years uh, in 1992 three, I went to uh, Japan for one year, then happened to um, international friendship through the performing arts in America, uh, saw me perform in Beijing, then they asked if I want to come to uh, US for tour. Sure, I didn't think about it, so, but I didn't know if I can get the visa or not here. In 1994, they uh, scheduled me a 10 city tour, uh, New York, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Denver, um, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the other, it was 10 total. But anyway, so uh, the reason I want to tell you the story is that 1994, not many people know people. I still remember uh, I was in Denver Museum and somebody asked, uh, oh, the uh, presenter was uh, announced on the radio, said, please come to see the Chinese woman play the pipa tonight. But five minutes later, they called the presenter. How could this Chinese woman play the pipa? So they thought I was a play a vegetable. <laughs> but because of that, really changed my life. I supposed to go back to Japan to finish my master degree for comparison of Chinese pipa and the Japanese biwa. I already got into the program in uh, Tokyo Daigaku uh, University. But at that time I said, you know, if 
2,000 years old Chinese people. It's such a long history, so beautiful. And American people not knowing about this instrument, I should stay in America to promote Chinese music. So since 1994, my goal is to try to do, to promote the Chinese people and go to the uh, young generation from K to 12. Then eventually I'm lucky enough uh, became um, a teacher at uh, Carlton Colleges. Now this year will be my 20th years uh, teacher at Carlton College. And also I'm very, very lucky. Carlton College is such amazing liberal arts school. And uh, we were, to 2008, we were the first higher education in US to offering music major. You can play on Chinese pipa or any Chinese instrument. So in 2008, we had a first pipa player who graduated, got her BA on pipa. Um, Shi Mian Mai for the ambush from all sides. And then also I tell you the story why I want to tell you how much instrument I play because, because my mom, first of all, now I can teach every instrument basically at a Carlton. So that's, that's the scoop. So then besides the teaching, I love teaching. All my life, I want to be a teacher. So basically Carlton gave me the dream I wanted to and also still continue my people. So that's the best scenario I ever can ask. So I'm teaching and during the summer or during the break, I will be travel all over the world, still traveling. So um, then in the summer, I will go back to China to teach some lectures and um, performing tours. Right now, my, um, my most concert due to the <laughs> pandemic canceled all. So uh, since my last concert was March 8th, I still remember we canceled about 20 concerts in the United States. We canceled the uh, uh, China tour. And, uh, but luckily now we have Zoom. So basically I live in the Zoom. <laughs> basically performing uh, with Zoom and the lecture, teaching my Carlton student, teaching private students from all over the country. Some people from Spain, some people from China, some people from New York, Seattle, or Chicago, you know, whatever uh, people ask. So I'm doing all the Zoom teaching and um, also Zoom a concert. If anybody are interested in my next live concert is adapted. First live concert will be next Thursday. I will play with the Syria wood player in the New York Mill in up north of Minnesota. So if anybody will be interested, I can share link. You can see it's an improvisation. Everything is on the spot. We never talk about anything. We just play on the spot, then the never repeat it. So that concert, um, me and the collaboration will be the lifetime concert. Anytime you go see it will be world premiere. <laughs> so I haven't seen uh, some for eight months. We'll see how can we connect again. So now uh, I would like to do is to introduce you the people, I guess. You don't want to hear me talk Chinglish. <laughs> I don't speak very good uh, English, but at least uh, uh, if, by the way, if anybody have a question, please do post uh, on the question uh, box or whatever uh, uh, Q&A. So I will be happy to answer uh, for you. So. Uh, the pipa is about 2,000 years old, we will refer, we think. Uh, they came from the Middle East, uh, like a Arabic, like the wood. It's more like the uh, wood. It's like the beginning of the plucked instrument. Then it, they went to Europe, become a wood, wood from a lute, then lute to guitar and to many different plucked instruments. Then the wood later went to a east, like a, a Asia, a sitar, pipa, and all the lute kind of, a, a, a kind of a 
same family. So it's about 2000 years, then later, uh, especially during the Silk Road, then we have changed a lot. So in the early, early time, the pipa, actually I bought other pipa, I forgot where I show you, but uh, it's uh, holding this way like a Japanese biwa right now. If you say how the Chinese people look like, it's more like a biwa. Uh, they hold this, we use big pack. Um, now we don't play that way anymore. So we play like this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to see if I can adjust my camera so you can see my left hand and right hand. Can you still hear me good? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you very well. Okay, so I want to make sure everybody can see me, my boss hand. Okay, so the pipa toning. If you're a musician, it's A, D, E, A, only four strings. So some people by mistake, they think we have 12 or well, how many, but it's not, we only have four. And we also have five fake nails. You see, you if you look closely, I have this fake nails with plastic uh, nail. The reason is we're doing this long time ago, our pipa string made of gut and or silk. So you don't have to have use your, uh, your own finger. Uh, on, you, you, you don't have to use your artificial fingers, so your uh, fingernails, so you just use your own. But uh, uh, in early, uh, like a 20, uh, like a 1950s, uh, 60s, and uh, we changed the string into a steel. So it's more difficult to use your own nails. If you use your, especially for girl, our nail is much softer than the uh, men's. So that's why uh, they invented this uh, fake nails. So you can protect your finger. And uh, also it's very interesting. Uh, many people call this pipa sounds like a guitar, mandolin or banjo, whatever you think about it. But it's not because the guitar, when you plug, you towards the inside like this. <laughs> Sounds like a, a guitar. That's not a people play. We plucked towards out. So you start index finger first, then middle finger, then ring finger, then pinky, then some back, backward. So it's like a one, two, three, four, five. 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 One, That's how you play the pipa, okay? <laughs> so it's totally different. And also uh, Chinese music uh, always tell you stories. They wanted to tell, okay, here's the flowing water. So like a little creek or bubbly water, like the bubble and behind your boat. So yeah, okay, like that. Or you can make like a blow wind, like the especially Minnesota, so cold. We already had a nine inches snow, so you, you can hear the uh, wind. Or you can hear Chinese percussion band, bang, 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 Chinese drum, dum, dum, dum. Chinese simple together, sounds like this. Die, 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 die. Or cannon shot. Uh, like a, uh, oh, no, here. Or fire, fireworks. So you can just try that or horse trotting. So I'm going to play the music melody and the horse trotting at the same time. So 
I hope you hear the horse trotting. I also said sounds like a tick tock, a tick tock, <laughs> kind of like all the same. So now I even can imitate people talking. 你好吗？很高兴见到你。很高兴见到你 ，right? Or I can even make people laughing. Ha 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 ha. That's the Chinese people. <laughs> so you will say, "Wow, how that crazy thing you're doing, and how you do that." So I think it will be better to say a full piece. And before I will open it up with all the、uh, questions, the reason we. We had to do a video, is because the internet is not stable. So if I play live through Zoom, sometimes they kind of like a piece to piece. So I have this Smith Sony recently just did a, a people live,、uh, I mean show with the actual、uh, Ming Dynasty,、uh, Ming Dynasties. Artwork together, so I played this piece called Flying Dragon. Then they said, "Wow, what's Flying Dragon about? It's really is about my own life."、Um, like I, you know, I was born in China, and uh, uh, I was born the year of the dragon, and I was born the、uh, eighth morning. So because of joining the Cultural Revolution, and my mom was worried about my future. They said to took me to a fortune teller. Then they said your daughter was born in the year of the dragon at eight o'clock. Your daughter will be the flying dragon. So this, my mom said, "What's meaning?" He said, "Your daughter will be travel all over the world, never settle down." Then my mom said, "Impossible! It's nineteen sixties. The China is not open to、uh, the world." So my mom said, "Oh." Forget about it. But she told me this story. I always remember. Then I realized I was, I am a flying dragon. Think about it. Age twelve, I left my family, travel all China, all over the China to tour. Then I from、uh, Luoyang to Shijia, uh, Hanzhou, Shijia Zhuang, Beijing, Tokyo. Now I'm in Minneapolis, so I'm still like traveling. And、uh, I also think about the interesting is after I came to America, I was like, great, no more travel. No, I was wrong. I was eight months on the road, all over the world, until I had until I came to Carlton. Otherwise, I was eight months on the road to perform. So, during the difficult time,、uh, at age twelve, I realized how lonely I was, how sad I was, how struggle I was. So, I wrote this piece. Basically, is reflect of my mixed feeling.、Uh, it was a sad. Lonely struggle and also little happiness there. If you hear, because when I see people like my music, that really kept me going. And so the you you came to hear support me because all of the audience, all of the supporters, to give me this wonderful feedback. I'm continued. Otherwise, could be a long gun. Now let's listen or.、Um, My、uh, own composition, my first composition called the Flying Dragon. Thank、you 
I hope this performance conjured up for you the Yeah, I hope this performance <laughs> is perfect ending that. Okay, um, uh, I hope you like uh, uh, the music. That was my first ever composition. And like I always say, if you like, I would I appreciate. If you don't, it's okay. I will work harder. Hopefully one day you will like my music. <laughs> okay, I saw somebody ask me how the notes uh uh, determined to which string. So uh, basically this one, that's the central C. Central C up, up lower of the central C and go down to the A. So the A, D, E, A. So it's, uh, if you play the piano, uh, central C, the go three step down, that's the first string. Then you go down E, D, then A. So that's uh, active there. And also um, we're using a number, uh, like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is a do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. That's how we uh, use our uh, simplified Chinese notation. And uh, the rhythm, just like I mark, uh, I mean, Western notation, if it is uh, eighth note, we'll have a line, one line with uh, two notes together, one beat. If it's a 16th note, we'll have a four notes and two lines. And also you are talking about um, what's the phrase? Phrase is in the earlier time or pipa is only four is the big one and uh, 11, uh, 13 of this phrase. Now we add, add more before uh, because of five pentatonic scale is Chinese music elements. So it's more like, a, right? But uh, then uh, during the Cultural Revolution, uh, during that period of time, we add more phrase and more. Now it's equal temperament. So you can hear that, or I can play more. The, So you can play whatever you want now. So uh, since I came to America, I'm not just play the traditional pipa. And when I play traditional pipa, I wanted to follow the traditional note, like the Pudong style where my teacher taught. But if I uh, also, I'd love to collaborate with uh, different people like blues, jazz, and Indian, mm -hmm. and Syria, uh, or whatever you think about it. And anytime, uh, a Jewish, I mean, klezmer music, uh, Irish music, uh, symphony, and uh, bluegrass, you can, whoever come to me, I would love to play with them. <laughs> That's the one thing I love. And I love improvisation because I think improvisation is more like a, from your heart, then you just connect like a talk, a conversation with people. So, and now we only have a short time. I want to make sure we answer all the questions, right? We have uh, one more that was submitted in advance. So they asked um, if you have long nails, can you play the people with your real nails or no? Um, if we use the old string, I have long nail, I can. But the sun is not bright enough. At least I have to go back to change it to the silk string. But that, that instrument, that will limit the bright sun. So is uh, right now the people always have a fake nails. If you say, I don't want it to, that's fine, but maybe it's not a got the best 100% sun out. Okay, yeah. um, and then one more question, I think before we sign off, maybe if anyone else has any more you wanna squeeze in, please submit them. Um, but is it possible to buy a pipa in the US? Is there anywhere in the US that sells pipas? Yeah, actually, East Coast, the West Coast, that all have a Chinese, uh, 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 Chinese instrument store, or you even can buy a Amazon. I'm not just kidding; it really is. And uh, I usually just uh, just connected the uh, factory. If you really want, I can do it. So connect the factory. The factory usually just uh, uh, directly sent from China through uh, through overseas. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And that's the reason I wrote the PIPA message book because before never had an English one, they only have a, um, only have a Chinese. And I realized uh, 
the book I wrote, I basically I was writing for the people who can grab the book, sitting in front of their computer or your living room. I, I record not just write in Chinese notation and Western notation. And I also recorded both hand, right hand, left hand on each piece. So you basically, you is like a self-taught um, TV show. So you, you can look at your book, then you look at the video, oh, left hand is this way, oh, right hand is this way. So it's quite a whole learner. So I really, really happy they did that. So now I have so many people from all over the world actually bought the book. They said, they said it was very hopeful. Basically is it somebody, it's like me in your living room. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much, Gao Hong. I think we're almost out of time. Um, we did have one person ask um, about getting the info for your upcoming concert. So I will send that out in the follow-up email. Um, okay. So anyone and everyone who's interested can check that out. Um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you, Gao Hong. Um, your enthusiasm and passion for the PIPA is contagious. It's absolutely amazing to hear your story of how you grew up and to see how enthusiastic you still are about the PIPA and all the opportunities and, and all the amazing things you've done. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day if you're in the US and a nice evening if you're in Europe. So thank you and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Gao Hong. Thank you. Bye.